a circle in a spiral Like a wheel within a wheel Never ending or beginning Like the circles that you find In the windmills of your Visit stogiegeeks.com forward slash debonair for a list of retailers who carry debonair cigars. Buy some today and get a little more debonair. <clears throat> Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geeks show. This is our debonair ideal segment. I do want to announce that Mr. Phil Zangi of Debonair Cigars will be here in Rhode Island this Saturday, two days from now, in fact, right in our backyard. I mean, it's literally like... Halfway between my house and the studio, and my daily commute is about 10 minutes by car, about 30 minutes by bike, and uh, so he'll be right here in our backyard. Uh, I'll be attending the event. It's from 1 to 6 p.m. at Club Jocks, and um, the uh, Mr. J. Savannah Smoke Shop is uh, selling tickets, which are probably most likely sold out at this point, but he'll be launching the Indian motorcycle premium tobacco line of cigars officially here in Rhode Island this Saturday. I'm very excited uh, for that event. Yep, and he'll be at Mickey Blake's actually tomorrow night in Connecticut uh, doing the Connecticut launch. He's been in New England for quite some time, Will. Yeah, I mean, he came in, we're, we're talking two oh, weeks two ago. Two weeks ago, floor, yeah. At Kirk Kendall's. And he, he launched it, it in, uh, that is in Londonbury, New Hampshire at right. Twin Smoke Shop where Kirk yep. Kendall is. Yep, and then I know he made his way to the New York area for a while, and now he's making his way back into New England. It's awesome. So, marathon road trip for Phil Zengi. It is, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Phil Zengi taking it to the road. I mean, he he really. I mean, he's really taking <clears throat> this new line to the road, which I think is the way to do it. Absolutely. Yep. <clears throat> um, so this segment is about giving cigars to friends. I, I think we've done a segment about this before, and really what sparks this will is my neighborhood block party. In my neighborhood block party, all my neighbors get together, we hang out, they have a little like, um, they bring someone in for the kids, whether it's a magician or a science guy or what have you for all the kids. We go to the open common area in our neighborhood, we have a fire, and one of the things, uh, and this wasn't even really me that started it, but um, all my neighbors have cigars. And I mean... Like, we don't wait until, like, the kids go to bed or whatever. Like, this is, like, a true cigar smoker-friendly event. From the time the event starts, from the time that it ends, everyone is smoking cigars. Um, so I, I kind of took it upon myself uh, in years past. I bring, like, a box of random cigars for everyone to smoke. Uh, and everyone kind of expects that. They're very appreciative. Everyone kind of brings something. I bring cigars. Um, and I brought a big thing of margarita mix, which is kind of interesting. Um, <laughs> but everyone brings their kids. It's great. No one complains about the cigar smoke. We're all outside. No one cares that we're all you know together smoking cigars. And it's interesting, Will, uh, kind of off the subject, but it's interesting how cigars you know are kind of have that social effect on people. You're sitting around with your neighbors that you really. I mean, even though you live in the same neighborhood, you may not talk to them every day. Of course, you may not see them very often. But it's kind of that one day out of the year where I get to sit around with my neighbors uh, and have cigars, which I think it's important to know your neighbors. And I think it's really nice to share a cigar uh, with all of the neighbors because we're all busy. You know, of course, they're always in invited to various events and, and things like that at our local cigar lounges. But this is truly an event where we can don't have to worry about driving home. Uh, we can sit in a relaxed environment. We all bring our kids and our families there, so we're not like taking time away from our, our friends and family. Uh, we all get to congregate in one place and have cigars, Will, which is just, it's always a very special day for me for a lot of reasons. And one of the nice parts is I integrated cigars and, and everyone loves it. And even some of the neighbors that don't smoke will be like, why wow, your cigar smells really good? And it's just a great social environment. Yeah, you know, um, I know we're doing the three-year anniversary show on Friday the 30th, and I'm flying back to North Carolina uh, the next day for Halloween. Now, my kids are older, so they're not really yeah. into the trick-or-treating anymore, but my next door neighbor, Dan, and I, it's been a tradition since I moved down here that basically we're outside. He has a fire pit, um, actually, that he could put right in his uh, front yard. He's got a really nice front patio. 
Mm -hmm. Um, And we traditionally have always, because it gets cooler at night by this time of the year, and we're out there at the fire pit, and we're giving candy out. So, and we're smoking cigars. That's awesome. Yeah, so that's one thing I'm looking forward to getting back that night for. And then, you know, and then the the question, that one of the questions I wanted to address in this segment is, um, well, also, the nice part about this time of year was as it starts to get cooler here in New England and in, in North Carolina, it's just such the perfect cigar smoking weather. It's just amazing how much better cigars taste and burn in this cooler weather. But uh, not that it's been cooler here. I mean, it was like 84 degrees here today, but um, we will have cooler weather. I'm not complaining that it's hot, believe me. I want it to be hot for as long as possible. Uh, as winter, last winter was miserable. But um, <clears throat> what I want to talk about is what, what cigars do you bring? Like I put together a random box, and I'm curious uh, what you would say to this, Will, is when you're in a social setting like that, there's a mixture of different kinds of cigar smokers. Like what cigars do you typically bring? Um, you know, it's interesting because I think I, I make a three-way split of cigars. Um, I will bring some infused cigars for, believe it or not, because there are some women who sometimes want a cigar. Or other people can't... that may want an infused cigar. And I, right. I tell you what, Will, um, Drew Estate True. makes some awesome infused cigars, dude. I mean, the they're, they're, uh, they're the tobacco, the, the, yeah. uh, the Java, and the Acid. You can't go wrong, and it's interesting, you know, us as Stogie Geeks may kind of shun those cigars. They're not bad. I've tried them. They're not bad. Um, but it can get some of those people who are non-cigar smokers or every once in a great while cigar smokers really enjoying a cigar, um, which I think is great. Yeah, and, and that's a good point. It, it really is, and, and you're right. When it comes to the infused, it's a premium cigar you're giving them. Right. Um, and, you know, I, I, I tend to keep some of the, uh, either the acid toasts around or the Cuba Cubas, um, or what yep. I tend to keep around. I don't, I'll smoke <laughs> them occasionally. I'm not going to say I don't smoke them because I do, yeah. but I always tend that there's someone <clears throat> who wants that. So I'll, I'll have some of those. Um, I'll then bring a lot of what I, you know, those, I don't want to say cheap cigars, but inexpensive cigars. You know, I keep some EP Carrillo core lines around, yep. uh, La Polina El Diario's, um, where, you know, they're not expensive, they're not going to break the bank, but if someone's going to leave half the cigar, you're not going to be upset about it yeah. either. And you know, in a, in a larger setting like that, there are going to inevitably be people <clears throat> who leave half the cigar. Um, although my event in my neighborhood block party, dude, I had people going back for seconds. Like, they definitely finished. They got way past the halfway mark. Because I brought smaller cigars. A lot of people in the neighborhood like smaller cigars. Uh, and I actually wrote on the box. I'm like, please take one or two. I'm like, I put enough in there where everyone could have two cigars. You know, I filled a, uh, an empty box. There's probably 20 cigars in there. Right. And, um, you know, people definitely you know, went back. I'm like, go back, have another one. Absolutely. So, um, you know, having something that's lower price is good. In my case, it was kind of nice. I was like, I was, in, I was like ecstatic that people had finished the first one and went back for a second one. I'm like, this is great. Yeah, it really is. And then I'll have my humidor, my, my travel humidor with some with some stuff in there that, you know, people say, hey, what do you got that's really good? Yes, uh-huh. I always bring the box for everyone and then my travel case for me and other people who, like, are a little more enthusiast about cigars. And I'll give them, um, you know, maybe a, a Cuban cigar because people really dig that. Yep. Um, I gave I had some aged uh, E.P. Carrillo uh, cabinets, the Sumatra wrapped ones. Oh, it's great! Yeah, I gave one of my neighbors uh, who's in the military uh, and big into cigars, and he actually does he does some training in Pennsylvania near Cigars International, and chooses to do it there because him and his buddies go to Cigars International in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Uh, to do that, so you know, I gave him one of my cigars from my my special travel case. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm usually, as far as review cigars go, I don't give those out um, just out of respect to the company. Will I occasionally do it? Yeah, if I know someone really likes a brand. Right. But as a rule of thumb, you know, I don't like the bring. Those aren't meant, those are meant to be reviewed or given away. No, show, in that setting, you're absolutely right. Well, it's a great point. I don't bring any review cigars. If I give a review cigar to someone else, it's because it's with the stipulation that after they smoke it, they're going to send me feedback and almost like review it with me or for me, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if I have more than one of a review cigar, the very short list of people that will get uh, one of those review cigars. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, if it's someone I know and like they want to try the new CAO, you know, I'll do that. And you know, yeah. I'm not again, but I'm, I'm more of an exception. And 
I don't review my cigars at a neighborhood smoke out. I mean, I no. actually have, I actually have heard of of online guys reviewing cigars when they're out. With, I don't know how no, you do that. That is not a review time at all. I mean, because I mean, you know, I'm chasing kids or I'm talking to people. I'm drinking yep. margarita. I'm not having a good parent. I'm not like drinking water or you know something uh, that's the same throughout all the cigars. Um, it, it's it's not the place to be reviewing a cigar. You're absolutely right. I think I smoked. Um, I don't even remember what I smoked. I think I might have smoked four cigars while I was out there at the neighborhood block party. One of them was Roma Craft. Uh, that I, that that's was, a great cigar to bring. You know, we didn't. Even talk, that's a great cigar to bring for something like that. Quality mm-hmm. cigar. Yeah. I'll typically bring one of my Cuban cigars um, with me to that as well. Uh, I think I might have brought one of those. Uh, I don't remember what else I brought though, but um, which is why, again, I you don't review cigars because, like I said, if I smoked four cigars at the block party, I can only remember one or two, which was probably the margarita mix that I made that was too strong. My wife was feeling pretty good at the neighborhood block party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, and even in terms of. First of all, it's not the ideal place to review a cigar. But second of all, it's not real debonair if you're taking a cigar that no one else really can have yet. Um, right. You know, but but in general, I don't know how. I mean, I've heard of a couple of. I've seen a couple of write ups on, on this you know, over the years, and I'm like, you just don't do that. Yeah. No, absolutely not. Yeah. Um, so what in terms of what I brought for other people? Again, it's a mixture. Will right. Um, <clears throat> I typically bring smaller cigars, so I don't have that problem of people. You know, lighting up a Churchill and smoking a third of it and then putting it down. So size-wise, I definitely go smaller. Um, and I kind of run the gamut through a bunch of different brands. Um, you know, I had some of the Pinot Del Rio that we, we talked about in a previous show. Uh, I brought some of those. Uh, a couple of infused cigars I'll throw in there. Uh, and then, the, you know, the manufacturers just range from, you know, some of the cigars I got on closeout, you know, some cigars, uh, it, typically it's never, it's never a cigar that's gifted to me, right? Because those are the ones that I smoke. Um, it's, you know, stuff I maybe got on closeout or stuff that's been aging, uh, that I've got a whole box of, I'll throw one of those in there. So it, it's definitely a mixture. Yeah. I mean, you, you've always, for, I know on the show historically have talked about Mr. J's tent sale, mm-hmm. um, you're getting stuff on closeout. You're getting good stuff. Yep. Absolutely. I remember I, remember I scoured up those Avo LE 10s <clears throat> at a really good price, you know, left over from that. Right. So, you know, by no means are they cheap cigars, but you're getting them at a good price, and maybe then you can afford to go give something out that's a little more premium, you know? Absolutely. I would say <clears throat> don't give something out, though, that you're not going to smoke yourself. I would agree with that statement, Will. Yeah, yeah, I don't, because typically that doesn't work out well. It's kind of interesting. You know, on my way into work today, Will, I lit up the uh, Ash and Elegantia. And someone had given me that cigar that they got in an event when they were released three or four years ago. Um, has it been that long? It probably has The been. Elegantia is four years ago. Four years ago. So he... 2011, yeah. My friend who lives near uh, Casa de Monte Cristo... Ashton must have had an event there. He got one, gave it to me. I loved it. They did an event here four years ago in Rhode Island, and I bought a box. And they were just okay. It was like a night and day difference between the one he gave me and the box I bought. For the past four years, I've gone back and smoked some of those out of that box. And I, ha- I have to be honest with you, I haven't been a huge fan. Uh, this is a Churchill size. <clears throat> they don't seem to be getting any better with age. They don't seem to be losing anything. In terms of flavor, but they they don't seem to be getting any better for whatever reason. I gave some of those cigars out at an event um, a couple of years ago, and that got like the the least favorable reviews. So it kind of speaks to what you said. You gotta put in there what you like to smoke and what you think is good uh, yeah. to give people a positive experience. Exactly, exactly. And I think we've all done that. And I'm not know. saying that's a bad cigar. I'm just saying it's just not one that's fit in my palate, and I've given it more than a, a fair share, you know? Exactly, exactly. <clears throat> it could be a size thing, too. Yep. Okay, so uh, that concludes Debonair Ideal. Stay so, tuned. We've got an epic Stogies of the Week coming up. Lots oh of boy. cigars to review. Just put so. your seatbelt on, yeah. That's it. Stay tuned. Yep. We'll be right back. <laughs> 